Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this video where I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do some page animations while you're doing a page transition using React Router DOM and the Framer Motion uh, library. So I have an example over here of what we're going to be kind of kind of like building, uh, we're not going to build this whole website. This is actually a website that I made um, for a video that I posted last year. But the important part of this video is um, the fact that now if you move through the through the pages, you can see there's a little transition, right? There's an animation. And obviously, you might not like this animation. This is this lighting animation that I made. Um, you might like other types of animations like a fade in or whatever. Um, but the purpose of the video is just teaching you guys the library, understanding how to make this in your application. And then I'm going to show different types of animations that you might want to use and just being able to customize it yourself depending on what you want. So with that in mind, let's get into the video. Okay, everyone. So we're gonna start out with the code for um, whatever for, for this website over here because I feel like I shouldn't I should teach you guys how to do this with an existing website. So you're gonna you're gonna add this page animations to a website that you already have. But if you also are starting from scratch, you can just uh, use the information that I want to teach you guys um, in order to create your website already from the beginning with the page transitions animations already working. So with this website, you can see. Right now, there's no animation. It just whenever I, I switch the links, um, it will, as you can see, just uh, go to the page. And the code for this is as following. Um, it's pretty simple. There's a lot of code for this project. And again, if you want to check out, I have a video showing how to build this. Um, but the important part is recognizing that we're using React Water DOM, right? And we're defining our routes in our app component over here. Now I'm using version six of React Router DOM. So this is how we define routes. We use the routes component over here and we use the element property um, to pass the components that we want to display. Now, how exactly are we going to add the animations? Well, the first thing we have to do is install the Framer Motion package. And in order to install it, you open your terminal, go towards where you want to install, then just run yarn add Framer Motion like this. Then press enter and it will install the package. Now, I, if you're using npm, it's just npm install, but I'm using yarn, so it should be fine. Actually, yeah, it just installed the package. So let's just close this right now. Now, what we want to do is we want to come to where we define our routes, which is on our app component. And I want to show something important that you guys have to do whenever you're doing some page animations. Most animation libraries will require you to pass a property to your routes component called the location property. Now you can get that location by using a hook from React Router DOM called the use location hook and just defining the location like this, just saying const location equals to use location. The reason why you need to do this is because this library is over here. They are unable to recognize which page you're in based on the route by not by not getting this information from React Router DOM. So you need to access the location for this to work. But the problem is, as you can see, it broke our website. And the reason for this is because um, we can only use the use location hook in components where it's inside of the router uh, wrap over here, right? And we can't do that right now because we're declaring this outside of this router component, right? So instead, we need to call this inside of a component that is inside of this two things over here. So that's kind of difficult because we're defining our routes over here, right? So what most people do in this kind of situations is they actually create another component over here. Uh, I'm just going to a components folder, you can put this wherever you want, called animated routes. And this is just the component which will define all of your routes. So I'll say animated routes, and I'll define my component. I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it better. But basically, what we're going to do here is we're just going to copy all of these things over here and just put it directly over here. And then right over here, we're just going to pass the animated routes um, component. There's no issue in doing this, you, you don't need to put the routes inside of here. So this is completely fine. And now we can just use this use location hook inside of the animated routes com component because it, it is inside of the router component. And we also need to import this. So I'll just come here at the top copy the import statement and put it all over here. We don't need this one anymore. Just like we don't need um, this three over here anymore. 
And now what we need to do is we need to grab all of the import, like the, the pages, the components that you're using on the routes and pass it to this component over here, right? Because this is where we are rendering the actual components. So I'll just open this up a little bit more so you guys can see better. And I'll just paste it over here and it should be working perfectly. Now, what we will need to do now is we need to pass the location over here by saying location equal to location. Not only that, but for, for the frame or motion library to work, we also need to pass a key, which will be the location dot path name. And this should be fine for all of the initial configuration, right? We're, we're, we haven't done anything related to the library yet. We're just setting up stuff so it can work with React Router DOM. Now, what we need to do is we need to import, import the stuff directly from the framer motion library. So I'll just come over here at the top and I'll import something from the framer motion library. But I want to point out something. A lot of people get bugs when just importing stuff directly like this, which is how they define in the in the documentation. And unfortunately, I don't know why this is, is doesn't work for me and it doesn't work for a lot of people. So a workaround for, for this, if you're getting this bug, is you just put this over here as the import statement. And it should work if you do it like this. And then what we want to import is the animate presence um, component. So presence like this. And then just wrap all of this around with the animate presence component. So we'll just paste it over here. Um, not like this, I'll just say animate presence, and then just wrap all of this around with it. And this will basically define which routes you can actually animate. Now, if I save this, you can see that the website is working. Um, but the animations are not here, we haven't actually created which animations we want to work. So um, they're not appearing, but it is set up in a way such that we can actually add animations to our page transitions. So in order to do this, we're actually going to have to go directly to the different pages that we have inside of our project. So we have the home page, we have the menu page, the about page and the contact page. So I recommend going to whichever ones you have in your project and doing the following. I'm going to go first to the home page, this one over here. And what we want to do is we want to import at the top over here from um, the same package that I mentioned, which is this thing over here. Let me just copy it and then paste it over here. And then what we want to import is something called motion. And motion will allow us to define how our animation will run. And the way we do this is we grab the upper level div of our page. So our home page is this div over here, right? This is where what encompasses the whole page. And we define it as a motion dot div like this. And this will also be a motion dot div. Then now that we have this, we can actually add some properties to it, right? It works like a normal div. So this was part of this div before, but it also has uh, another property to it, which is called the initial property, the um, the animate property, and the exit property. So those are the three things that you need to put inside of your motion div. Now they define how your animation is going to work. So for example, if we want to do a very simple fade in and fade out animation, we, we can do it this way. In the initial, we need to explain how um, the opacity of our page will look like, right? We add some CSS. In this case, we're doing a fade in fade out. So we change the opacity from zero to one, zero making it not visible one making it visible. And what I'm going to say is that uh, the opacity initially is equal to zero. But what the animation will do is it will turn the opacity equal to one. And when we're exiting, we want to make the opacity of this be equal to zero again, so that it, it completes the transition, right? Now we can save this and check to see if it's working. So if I refresh the page, and I go to another page, for example, directly from the home page, you can see it kind of fades out, right? And it, it works for every single page, because it is actually exiting with the correct animation that we defined. Now, the way we make it so that um, it will also work in between other pages and the home page is we just add the this whole thing over here on the other pages as well. So I'm going to go to the four pages, the about page, do this as well. So let me just put it over here on the on this one over here, just put this, then we also need to make this into a motion div by adding the motion dot div around it. And finally, what we need to do is just put the import of motion over here at the top. So I'll just paste this. So you do this for every single page, and it should be working for every page. So I'll do this right now. and I'll be back in a second. 
Okay, so as you can see, I did this, I added the, the animation for all of the pages, and I made all of the correct and necessary changes. And now if we refresh the page, you can see that as I navigate towards other pages, um, it doesn't matter where I go to, it will always work out. We have this little fade in fade out animation. Now, some people might not want this, they might want what I had in the beginning of the video. So I'll show you guys how we can do something similar to that. So to do that, it's actually very simple as well. Um, we all you have to think about is just CSS animations put into react, it's all the same, right? It's almost like you're just making a keyframe animation, which you can do by the way, in using the library. To do something like that, we could, for example, come to the home page, then um, say that we want initially for the width of our page, so the width of our page to be zero, right? And then when you get into the page, we basically just set the width of the page to be equal to uh, 100%. So what it's supposed to be, right? And I can set the width to uh, something like 100%. Um, to say that it's 100% of the of the width or whatever you want, you can say 100 VW, which means um, the width size, or you can even do something like this, you can set it equal to the window dot inner width, right. Um, but I like to use the 100% one because it's how I define the width of my, my page. So I'll do it this way. And then at the end, what you can do is you can say that when you're exiting the page, you're also setting it to 100% right? Because you're, you're basically, um, and you need to change this to x, by the way, not width, because you basically imagine this way, when you get to the page, it will slide in. But then when you're exiting this page, you want this little image or the div over here to go the other way, right? You want to initially, it come from the left and end in the middle. And then when you move to another page, you'll go from the middle to the right. So we can do that by set, by changing the x and setting the start of the x of the of our image to be equal to not 100%, but the window dot inner width. This is a, a little trick that I find um, to work well for me. So you just set it to be at the at the right end of your page. And uh, let's test this out to see if it works, right? We'll refresh the page, we're in the home page, when we go to the menu, it kind of slides out, right? But the transition isn't complete because the menu one doesn't have the same properties. So what we can do is we can just copy this and um, put it the same way to the other pages, right? And it should be working if we do something like this. So I'll refresh the page, go to the about page. And <laughs> it didn't work. Technically, it did work. But there's one thing we need to do. You can see um, it, it works kind of okay, like it doesn't work perfectly, because it has a delay. So if we want to fix this delay, we can actually just add um, how long we want the duration of the transition to be. So you can say something like transition over here, then add the duration from this transition. So I'll say like duration, um, I can say something like 0 0.1, then save this and add this to all of the other ones as well. Like this, I'll just come to the about, paste it over here, then to the menu, paste it over here, and then to the home and paste it over here. Now you can see that if I start on the home page, for example, all of them will have the transition. Now the speed of the slide can be dependent on you, you can choose whatever you want. Um, if you find the one that I put um, not as vi like visually appealing, um, you can definitely change it and do however you want. But um, I just wanted to make this video to show you guys how easy it is to make pay transition animations um, in react using react Router DOM version six. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting two times a week and I'll massively appreciate it. It will help support the channel and I'll be very grateful if you guys could do that. Again, thank you for watching and I see you guys next time.